manual drafting, hatching was traditionally used to show cut sections and types of materials. Today in CAD, hatches are still used, along with the more pretty version called gradients. NanoCAD is capable of placing hatch patterns and gradient fills. You'll find the commands for them in the Ribbons Home tab, Draw Panel. And if we click here, we can see the various options available. I'm going to start off with Fast Hatch. Just be aware that Fast Hatch uses whatever parameters were last set by the Hatch dialog box, which we will see later. So I'm selecting the Fast Hatch command, and then NanoCAD prompts me to find an internal point. And that's just simply a part of the drawing that's completely surrounded. So for example, I can click here and then press Enter, and NanoCAD hatches just the area between the two circles. Let me repeat the command to show you what happens if I click inside one of the small circles. Click, press enter, and only the small circle is hatched. Now let's see what happens when I click inside of here. Click, press enter, and you can see the outer circle is ignored and the little inner circles are ignored. The same holds true for fast gradient. I'll select it from the ribbon. Once again, I'm asked for an internal point. I click there, press enter, and there's your gradient. You want full control over how hatch patterns look, you use the hatch command, which displays the hatch dialog box. There's a whole bunch of options here. I'm just going to point out some of the main ones. If you click this uh, browse button here with the three dots, you get to see all the hatch patterns that are included with NanoCAD. Here's some from the ANSI standard, which is US the international standard, uh, generic ones, as well as uh, ones that are Japanese standard, Russian standard, and then if you have any custom hatch patterns that your firm has developed would appear here. Now there's a lot of options here. The easy way to apply a hatch pattern is to use this option, inherit properties. So you click the button and then you pick an existing hatch pattern and all of its properties will be copied into this dialog box. Now it's quite standard to have alternating hatch patterns at 90 degrees, so I'm going to change the angle to 90. And then this is the other important button, pick points. So I'm going to pick in here, press enter to indicate I'm done. And then this is very helpful, a preview to make sure it looks okay. Down here on the prompt line, we can accept it or reject it. If you choose reject, then it goes back to the dialog box. If you choose accept, the command ends. Embedded in the hatch dialog box are the options for gradients. And even though it's the same dialog box, the options are very different. You can choose which colors you want to have as the colors blend from one to the other. So I'm going to choose white into blue. And then you have different types of gradient styles. Earlier we saw linear. Let's see what spherical looks like. Just like with the hatch dialog box, I'll choose pick add points and press enter to continue and preview to have a look. You get this interesting pattern. On the command line, choose accept, and then repeat the command to show another gradient pattern, this time hemispherical. So once again, I click add points, choose that, press enter, preview, and you can see the gradient starts light blue at the top, dark blue at the bottom. It can be an effective way to imply a 3D look. Editing a hatch pattern is as simple as double clicking it. Up comes the familiar hatch dialog box, and then you can go make changes such as the hatch pattern type. 